Okay, another exciting week in the AI news realm. Let's get to it. There are a few that I am super excited about from new products like the R1 Rabbit to a film fund that wants to finance horror films with the help of AI. My goal with this channel is really making it easy for anyone to onboard to AI and making it just a little less intimidating. I do that through these videos, my AI toolbox, which allows you to search through things at your own pace. And I will leave a link to that in the description. I also have a newsletter, which I will also link in the description that I send out once a week to keep everyone updated as things come out. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you find any of this information useful and helpful to you in any way. All right, so now I am going to dive right in. Thomas Verdi, founder of the Film Fund, has developed a new AI-powered horror film development program called Unknown Nightmare. His main idea is for producers to submit a film to pitch, gain equity, and then produce their film. How does it work? Well, Thomas created a patent pending software called Producer Score, and his goal is to equity crowdfund $250,000 from investors and producers who submit film packages to his company. Now, the software is trained on previously produced screenplays. Which ones, you ask? That is what people want to know and have issues with because is it being done ethically? From that, he will be able to see where the scripts line up against other successful projects to make a choice on what he should produce. He'll then choose the 10 screenplays with the highest projected box office revenues to pitch to distribution companies. He'll get that through producer score. If your film didn't get picked, you would still have equity in the produced film. It's interesting. I am very curious to see if this works. The R1 was just released, and it is getting quite a bit of good press since its live unboxing. I'm sure they were a little bit stressed out due to some of the reviews from Humane's AI pin, specifically the review from MKBHD, who claimed it was his worst reviewed product ever. All in all though, these are new devices in a marketplace that has never existed before in ways that these products are just paving the way. The R1 is an interesting one. I haven't gotten a chance to get my hands on one. I thought it was going to include features that are just going to be added to your iPhone once Apple launches all of their AI tools. But it does look pretty cool. They have partnered with Eleven Labs. Now, Eleven Labs is the company that creates voices through voice synthesis. It also allows you to translate voices to other languages or other voices. That provides the voice for the rabbit. And they're also partnering with Perplexity, which is still one of my favorite A apps to date, to assist with all of their search. Now, the idea is that this device will be appless. You talk to the device, and since everything is in the cloud, it can handle any task you need, from translation, rideshare, get an Uber, playing music through all of your apps, and even using mid-journey directly on the device and being able to scroll through images that you generate right on your device through prompting. It can even use its camera to capture notes that you might have written down on a napkin or a piece of paper and translate that into a spreadsheet in, say, Google Docs or Notion. From the look of it, it seems pretty impressive. I really can't wait to get my hands on one, and once I do, I'll probably do a more in-depth review of it. Speaking of perplexity, I did do a video that is a lot more in-depth, and I'm going to leave that here. This amazing new search app looks like it just hit unicorn status with an additional $63 million investment. Just a few months ago, they raised $74 million in a Series B round. This values the company close to $1 billion. And most people I know have never even heard of it. With this additional influx of cash, they're looking to focus on enterprise accounts, which will hopefully tackle the security concerns that most people have, and that will hopefully allow for more people to onboard and adopt this uh, new AI workflow into their businesses. Perplexity is still probably my favorite AI app to date, and in my book will really give Google and Bing a run for its money. Even with all of their additionally added features like Copilot for Microsoft and Gemini for Google, they have integrated their AI into everything that you do. Now here's an interesting one. William Shatner, you might know him as Captain Kirk from Star Trek, released a music album for kids. No, 
The songs weren't made by AI, but the cover of the album was. Now that should be fine, right? Because it is an album made for his audiences, approved by him. Maybe not. Let's look right here. William Shatner posted right here, you can pre-order my new children's album on Amazon. Boom, here is the image. It's him sitting with a bunch of elephants and children, and obviously this was not real. Where will the animals sleep is what it's called. Nikki Lucas Longfish writes, didn't actors and writers just strike against AI? Artists are humans too, who like their craft and don't want AI taking over. Then William Shatner, William Shatner wrote something to her first, but blocked her after. He wrote right here, William Shatner wrote, wrote her back. Well, sweetheart, the only image is of me and I approved it. That means your cray-cray hysteria argument is null. The actors' union issue was that studios could take moving images of previous acting jobs and repurpose the moving images and put them into AI programs for use in another production without permission. Next time, if you are going to argue something, please make sure you understand the issue. With this nice little shoo-shoo. And then he went ahead and blocked her. And then uh, uh, on this article that I'll also link in the description, there are a number of people reacting it like, uh, could you please point out the copyright violations? True, but all the AI are trained. There's a lot of arguments on this, right? And those artists that borrow from other artists work as uh, homage, they are stealing as well, right? So it's kind of like you look at all these things and William Shatner is, is posing good arguments. Now AI is controversial and I am sure we are going to see a lot more like this in the future, but he basically was the guy ushering in all of this new technology anyway, right? Someone should use him to promote all of the new tech. I mean, in Star Trek, they had the communicators, boom, the humane pin, the iPad, the iPhone, all of these things, right? So that is something to think about. Meta's Ray-Bans now have multimodal AI. What is that, you ask? Well, when Meta launched their Ray-Bans, they were basically just able to capture content through the glasses, and they were also a good pair of headphones. But now it is basically an AI assistant able to process photos, audio, and text. The timing is interesting after the release of the Humane AI pin, which basically does the same thing, except it's here. Now, the possibilities are not limitless, though, but over time, I am sure Meta will keep updating and making more and more things of available to what you can do with these glasses and ask them. I mean, ultimately, it could be the rabbit. It could be the humane pin. They're all very similar. But the difference about this and the cool thing about this one is even without the assistant, the, the camera in your glasses or the earphones, you still get a really cool pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses. So Zapier is really trying to be your one-stop AI automation shop. They were in the right place at the right time since their business is all based around being able to run automation, utilizing tasks that all of these different applications we use are able to do on their own and automate them all to work together, right? They created a platform called Zapier Central, which really allows you to create behaviors or commands to trigger actions. Their thought is to make it available to the public in a beta form and they can get feedback from it. Ultimately, they're building their entire application in public. Now, Liam Otley had a fantastic interview with their director of AI, Andy Berman, who goes super in depth on what the platform will do. I'll leave a link to that in the bio so you can check it out for yourself. Now, Apple is continuing to push into the open source game with their new models. Mark Zuckerberg basically called them out last week for doing things in a closed source way and wanting to position Meta as the answer to that. But Apple is like, no thanks, Zuck. They released four new models to Hogging Face for a total of eight models that they're open sourcing. From what we have learned so far, it does look like Apple will be focused on in-device models to run this AI. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about what Apple's thinking at their developer conference in June. On another note, there also is a report that Apple might be the only major tech company that trained its AI legally. 
Apple has been reportedly trying to license work from Condé Nast, IAC, and NBC News to train its AI. They've even allegedly tried to make a deal with Google and OpenAI for more complex tasks. This is really smart, though, because it would put any of the copyright issues and problems onto the companies that actually train the data, which is Google or OpenAI. That sounds like a really smart move. Now, by now, everybody has probably already heard of the U.S. ban that is set to go into place on TikTok if ByteDance doesn't divest their company within nine months. The U.S. believes that there is a chance that information could be shared with the Chinese government. But ByteDance has denied all such claims of being an agent for China. There's a lot that will most likely happen in this story over the next nine months. You can say that the TikTok community is a very vocal one. This is what the CEO had to say. Hi everyone, it's show here. As you may have heard, Congress passed a bill that the president signed into law that is designed to ban TikTok in the United States. That will take TikTok away from you and 170 million Americans who find community and connection on all platforms. Make no mistake, this is a ban. A ban on TikTok and a ban on you and your voice. Politicians may say otherwise, but don't get confused. Many who sponsor the bill admit a TikTok ban is their ultimate goal. It's obviously a disappointing moment, but it does not need to be a defining one. It's actually ironic because the freedom of expression on TikTok reflects the same American values that make the United States a beacon of freedom. TikTok gives everyday Americans a powerful way to be seen and heard. And that's why so many people have made TikTok part of their daily lives. Rest assured, we aren't going anywhere. We are confident and we will keep fighting for your rights in the courts. The facts and the Constitution are on our side and we expect to prevail again. Our community is filled with people who have found acceptance. He does have a point. I will keep you posted as it develops. Now there is this new code on GitHub. It freaks me out a little bit, but I wanted to share it. I can't even really talk too much about it because I'm a bit disturbed by it, but I thought it was worth showing, knowing that not talking about something doesn't actually make it go away. If I could put it in front of you, you could see it, you could see what's out there, and maybe somebody can figure out what to do with this and how to, well, potentially make it go away or put it to use for positive reasons. The application is called Deep Fake Live. If you look right here, you'll see that it is a real-time face swap for PC, streaming or video calls. Um, you could look at this and the character examples they have, you can see are a few people that you might know, such as Keanu Reeves. They say right here, here is a list of available ready to use public face models. These persons don't ex do not exist. Similarities with real people are accidental, except Keanu Reeves, he's breathtaking. You got Ryan Reynolds there, Mr. Bean, you got Elon Musk. You, you know, you look at a few of these, right? I'll show you right now. Here are some examples. That, I mean, it is pretty terrifying, if you ask me. You know, the one with Ryan Reynolds is actually quite scary. That, that for sure looks like Ryan Reynolds. That doesn't. That does. Now, while there could be good positive use cases for this, I haven't found one yet. It's scary and it could cause a lot of problems. That is all I have for you today. Keep in mind that I film this on Thursday. So if more news comes out after this, I will most likely tackle that next week. I will put that in my newsletter. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will fill you in with more very soon.